the story of Jacob when he was wrestling God. The Bible tells us that he wrestled God what? Throughout the whole night. And he said to the Lord, what? I will not let you go. I will not let you go. I will not release you until you bless me. And the Lord saw the determination of Jacob's heart. He saw the determination of his heart. And what did the Lord do? The Lord blessed him and changed his name to Israel. What often happens is that for many of us, sometimes prayer is hard. Prayer is hard. And so often people turn away from the Lord just before their breakthrough comes. They become tired just before their breakthrough comes. And God is never early. He's never late. He's always on time. And we can trust his process. If he allows something in our lives, we can be guaranteed that as a loving father, there is a reason that he has allowed that event to occur in our lives. There is a reason. And when we look, if we realize that there is no area of sin or rebellion in our lives that's opening a door for the enemy, and there's something happening in our lives, we can be guaranteed that God has allowed it because there's something he's trying to create in us, shape in us, take out of us to make us more like Jesus and depend on him. So no matter how our flesh wants us to feel, we must run to our Father in heaven. He is not just God Almighty. He is your Father, my Father. He is an ever-present help. He never leaves. Right now, He is here with us, with you, with me, with every one of His children. We should run to God, go to Him with our petitions in prayer and in faith, knowing and believing that when we cry out that He hears us, when you cry out, when you pray to the Lord, he hears. And also knowing and believing that through Jesus, through Christ and Christ alone, that we are more than conquerors. You see, especially in times of tribulation and confusion, especially as the world is now, when things don't go the way we plan, when life throws us curved balls, in times of darkness and trials we must go to God first in faith and remain with God in faith but here's the thing that we have to understand as well that the God that we serve this father of ours who gave us his son his son who died upon the cross who gave his best for us that this father when we run to him we have to go to him understanding and knowing that not only is he able to answer what we ask him but he's able to do immeasurably more, infinitely more. God is able to do infinitely more than what we can imagine or ask, as the Bible says. It means that there is, there is no situation, there is no circumstance, it doesn't matter what you go through, there is nothing that we go through that can outdo God's resources or the power of God. It's about understanding who we are in Christ, who we are in Jesus. Understanding that we are the children, sons and daughters of the living God. Nothing can outdo the resources and the power of God. But even as we ask our Father in faith, here's the problem. We must also be willing to surrender to his will and to his purpose in that situation. Sometimes we're going to ask God for something and he will not give us. Because as a loving father, remember, he is omniscient. He knows all things. And he will not give us what we want at that moment because he's more concerned about the salvation of our souls than that material need. So we have to surrender to his will in that situation and know that in his own time, in his own way, he will open the right doors for us because there is no plan or purpose that we can have for our lives that can be better for the plan that God has for you in my life. You see, in every aspect of our life, submission is important. In every area of our life, submission to the will and the purpose of God is important. Complete submission. We cannot live as we want and live for God. No, it has to be complete 
submission. The Lord is looking for a people who are set apart, walking in holiness, committed to him, devoted to him. And it means that we have to submit in every single aspect, every single area of our lives. And I believe that if we are seeking the will of God first, if we are seeking the kingdom of God first, and if we are seeking the righteousness of God first, in all things, then as Matthew 6, 33 tells us, everything else will be added unto us. What is to happen oftentimes is that people want to seek the kingdom of the world first and then add God unto it afterwards. God is not a band-aid. He's not an ATM. He's not a genie that does what we want, how we want, when we want. 